Part Three. And my name is Kevin. Oh, nice to meet you guys. Now, Red, would you like to share your story with us? No, not really. Well, the court mentioned something about a rage episode at a child's birthday party. How long is this class anyway? As long as you make it. Really? Oh, okay. Uh, gentlemen, very nice to see you and to uh, almost meet you. Probably the nicest part of it is not getting to meet you. You know, in some weird way. All right. So this kid and I are going to go ahead and scoot on back out though. Out past those creepy statues and uh, ha! Ah! Back you go. Sure, no, I can take a seat. Indigo sat right beside him. So, in another sense, you are here with Indigo until I notify the court that your anger issues have been resolved. <laughs> oh boy. Well, on the bright side, at least we can make some new friends. Oh, joy. Chuck! Share your story with Red. Me? I am the last guy that should be here. Simple speeding ticket. Just told me I was going too fast, so I say, Your Honor, to be honest, I was. You caught me. I'm not angry. I'm honest. So, shouldn't I be in honesty management class? Because we gotta manage my honesty. Mm-hmm. My one problem, that's a different story than you told last time. Uh, we then go to Chuck's backstory as we see, as we see through his point of view, speeding as usual until a bird cop held out his hand to stop him and pointed to a stop sign. Chuck frowned, tapping his foot rapidly as the police officer was writing notes. Then Chuck got an idea and sped off. He sped off to the police station. He began to purposely make a mess by scattering and throwing papers around and even knocking over a mug. Then quick as lightning, Chuck returned back to the police cop, Bird. As the police officer, Bird didn't even notice he had left. Then Chuck had another idea and quietly took the cop, Bird's wallet and sped off again. At a bar, he was drinking something with other birds, watching. Drinks on me, guys! Then he zipped back to the police officer bird. Then Chuck sped off yet again while the cop's bird still wasn't looking. That is until a white glob fell from above on his shoulder. He looked up to see where it was from a vanilla ice cream cone Chuck was casually eating from high up in the tree. Chuck? We go back to the present. Okay, so maybe it wasn't ice cream. Ew. All right, Chuck, thanks, we got it. And this is Terrence. Mm. Whew, more like terrifying. Oh, oh my gosh, th th that's the biggest bird I've ever seen. Now, it says here in your little filey, <gasps> Her eyes widened as she, with fear at the outcome of what happened with Terrence. I know Terrence looks kind of scary on the outside, but inside he's as harmless as a daisy. Aren't you, big fella? Mm. Oh, uh, Terrence, uh, seems to have had an <clears throat> incident. Now, Bomb started with us two weeks ago. Tell us your story, Bomb. <sighs> okay, well, sometimes when I get upset, I uh, have been known to uh, blow up. So, like, what, like what? Like you getting mad or something? Well, no. I literally blow up, okay? I explode like a bomb. Hence the name. We look back to see Bomb walking inside his house and turning on the light. Surprise! Boom! Bomb exploded in surprise and accidentally blew up his own house. 
and the party guests were all covered with soot from Bomb's explosion, and the surprise sign disintegrated into ash. Uh, excuse me, party foul. Ow! Stella fell flat on her face. We go back to Bomb at the present as he stared into space, thinking back at that moment. Ah! Do it! Yeah, do it! No can do. I just went boom boom before class. Hey, look, I don't want to be here at all, but this can maybe make it a little more interesting to me, so please, explode. You can't do it, can you? Yes, I can, but I'm having back issues today, so I'm going to have to take a rain check. Oh! Do it! Yeah! Not the time or place, little amigo. These guys are all nuts, huh, big man? Mm. Are we speaking telepathically, or you're just... Mm. Good talk. Nice chatting with you. Soon we can see Hal playing some bongo drums and Bubbles inflating himself to blow into a horn. Today we're going to be working on managing our anger through movement. The birds all stood in a row. The first pose is the dancer pose. Terrence did the dancer pose. Great form, Terrence. Eagle, heron, peacock, warrior, mountain tree, rabbit, fish, locust, king pigeon, and of course, downward duck. Huh? Ugh. Then we can see Bomb doing the exact same pose, but shaking. Uh, excuse me, boring hippie lady. Uh-huh. Looks like the explodey guy's gonna puke. And have you done this before? Uh, yes I have, but usually not for free. Ah! Then Matilda very roughly pulled Red's leg. Didn't think so. Awesome. And how are we doing over here, Bomb? Doing wonderful. Stretching out the core. Ugh. Just remember to breathe up through your feathers and from your talons. Namaste. But then the yellow part of Bomb's fuse on his head lit up and began moving downward and his cheeks puffed out. Bomb? Kaboom. <coughs> nice. Awesome. Later that evening, Red, Chuck, and Bomb, along with Indigo, Fly, and Zack, were walking through the village covered with soot from the explosion. Oh, I don't know what happened. I was doing the poses, I was feeling all zen, Matilda was digging it, then I lost my grip on it, let it slip, and just squeaked out. Oh, don't worry about it, Bomb. You did your best, and that's all that counts. Aw, oh, thank you, Zack. Hey, so where are we going? I'm sorry, we? Yes, we. There's a new happiness exhibit at the Museum of Happiness that I'm dying to see. Uh, you know what? I mean, I, uh, I got a thing. A thing? <gasps> like a disease? <gasps> Is it bird flu? Chicken pox? <gasps> Cardinal sin? No, by thing I mean, like, a desire not to hang out with you. Plus... I gotta take care of this kid. He doesn't have a family. Oh. Oh, yeah, well, maybe for the best, you know, because I uh, I got something, too. And uh, Fly and I are going to be busy getting to know each other more. How did I forget? Even if you'd said yes, I probably couldn't have gone. I'm busy, too. I have, uh... A uh, business offer uh, deal that is uh, no bomb. You're not good at this, buddy. It, it, it's charming up to a point, and now it's just sad. It's a guy I know, and he's opening up a brand new luxury class reunion. Red groaned as he rolled his eyes and face palmed. Mm-mm. Huh? What? Uh, 
Okay, good, 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 good. Come on, Indigo. Uh, well, goodbye, guys. I've got to go with Red. Hopefully I can see you all again. Bye. Well, it looks like it's just us. Want to go get a bite? Oh, but what about your class reunion where everybody brings a business offer? Yeah, what's the deal with that, huh? Is that an excuse you made up? Actually, yeah. Sorry, guys. I was lying. Sorry if I fooled you. Oh, brother. Meanwhile, Red and Indigo were walking home together. Sad music begins to play. Hmm? Uh-uh. No means no. Hmm. Then the two birds passed by uh, some other birds happily socializing with each other. Hey! Get over here! Hmm? But just as Red was about to, the tall, handsome bird, handsome and purple bird, Okay. Just as Ray was about to, the tall, handsome, blue and purple bird went over to them instead. Hmm. Indigo could tell that Red secretly did want to make friends. Then he can they continued to walk home together. Oh! They looked up into a tree house and saw a blue a bluebird couple and what looked like to be a young female blue jay with them. <gasps> oh, I felt a peck! Her husband, Greg, rushed over and listened to the egg and smiled proudly at his wife. Oh, I can't wait to be a big sister! Red looked at them and lowered his head sadly. Indigo seeing how happy the family was, began to feel even sadder ever since he lost his own mother not too long ago. Soon, the two birds arrived at Red's home on the beach. <sighs> well, I guess it's still just you and me, Indigo. Yeah, just you and me, Red. They both walked inside and Red turned his attention to a Mighty Eagle poster. As he looked at it, he remembered one moment from his childhood. In a flashback, a school of kids' birds, including young Red, were all looking up at the statue of the tall and majestic Mighty Eagle. This is the legendary Mighty Eagle, our protector and hero. But no one has seen him for years. Mighty Eagle is missing. Uh, uh, when's Mighty Eagle gonna come back? Eyebrows, didn't your parents ever tell you Mighty Eagle isn't real? Shh, he doesn't know that. He doesn't have parents. Yeah, or even friends. That made poor young Red cry. We go back to the present as we see adult Red working on a scale model of his very own house. Indigo had fallen asleep on the couch. When Red had finished the model, he envisioned where his home should be located right in the middle of Bird Village. But then he thought of something, looked sadly at the model, and moved it on the windowsill away from the village. Red sighed as he laid his head on the window sill, still thinking. Then he looked back at little Indigo, fast asleep on the couch. He walked over to the small sleeping bluebird, knelt down beside him, and gently stroked his head. <sighs> Indigo, I guess I do feel a little bit lucky that you're the only one who likes me for who I am. And always keeping me company, ever since the day you first came. The day I met you. He smiled warmly as he continued on stroking the young sleeping bird. Gently. And Indigo, even though he was sleeping, smiled softly, as if he heard Red's words. 
Our camera view looks through the window from the outside as Red carried sleepy little Indigo in his arms up to their up to his custom-made bed in Red's bedroom as the night wore on. The next morning, we look out to sea through the fog and see something mysterious approaching. Underwater, we see the strange craft move across the water. We even see a shadow from above the water that looks like a ship. Then we hear a snorting sound as we see Bird Island from a telescope's point of view. Ha ha! Eureka! Back on Bird Island, the sun was, st was just rising and all the birds were going about their usual business, leaving their homes, heading to work or school. Even Judge Peckinpah was leaving while saying good morning to his niece, Winter. Good morning, Winter. Have a good day at school. Morning, Uncle Peckinpah. I will. Then Peckinpah climbed on top of Cyrus. Good morning, Your Honor. Here you go. The judge took his briefcase and coffee mug, got on Cyrus's head, and they both left. Achoo! Bless you. Ew.